the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ebro, Laura, and Rosenberg. Welcome to the program. Felicia Snoop Pearson. We call her Snoop. You know her as Snoop from The Wire uh, up here today because uh, we got to talk about Michael K. Williams' uh, season two on Vice TV, Black Market. Snoop, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, Ebro? How you doing? Oh, man. It's blessed to be here, man. Yo, it's dope. You're showing up for your bro, Michael K. Williams. Um, all the time. All the time. It's very dope. I know he, um, the first season, Black Market, uh, was fire. Laura, you've been watching the second season. Yes, I caught the first episode of the first season, and it was so good. I was instantly hooked. I didn't know what to expect at the beginning. And then I was like, oh, Great. the type of access that Michael had to a lot of these stories and the people who are living these lives is really amazing. Yeah, the underground world. That's what we call it, the underground world. Mm. I mean, and Snoop, I mean, it's a real thing. You come from the street, too. Uh, but talk about Michael K. Williams as, as a human being that you got very close to when y'all filmed The Wire. And um, just... You know, he comes from the real world, too, just like yourself. And y'all was able to mm -hmm. really keep those connections and access and share those stories. Uh, Mike was just an all-around, just amazing guy, you know. Um, if you come in contact with him, you know what type of feeling or expression that you get from mm -hmm. him. You know, like, he's just, he, just, he wore so many hats. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just out of this world, you know? So, you know, if I to sit here and name everything that Mike, you know, was into and what type of person he was, he was, I'd be here all day, man. Mike was just, just amazing. Amazing actress, I mean, actor, um, amazing, just amazing guy, man. Like, it's just hard. It's just hard to put a title or just to describe him because he was just amazing. Can you um, can you take us through your memories of when you first connected with him and he put you on to the wire, right? Yeah, he brought me on to the set. He brought me on to the set of the wire and um, well, I met Michael K. Williams um at Club One in Baltimore and um. He was looking at me crazy, so you know what I mean. I started looking at him crazy. I, you know, I'm from the streets. Don't look at me like I'm just, you know, uh, ready to do something to you because I'm gonna try to do something to you before you try to do something to me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he was just looking at me. I, I wasn't watching the why. I was in the streets, and my homeboy that I was with was like, yo, nah, that's Mike K. Williams. You know what I mean? Omar, the, the nigga that I'm um, on a wire. And I was like, oh, why? Right. So I let my guards down a little bit. So he came up to me, introduced himself and all that, asked me my name and all that. Cause he didn't know that I was a, a girl or a boy. You know what I'm saying? So okay. he asked me um, my name and all that. And he was like, yo, I love your swag. Huh? You know, um, give me a number. And I, we exchanged numbers. He called me and he asked me where Moffitt and Lanvel was. And I was like, um, that's like a block, two blocks away from me. And um, he was like, man, come on the set. So got myself together and went on set. And I was just talking and stuff. Excuse me. I was talking and stuff. And I think Ed Burns and Nina and David Simon and George was uh, walking past his trailer. And they heard me talking and they just circled back and started asking me questions. And I seen these, it's no no offense, I seen these white people, you know what I mean, keep asking me questions. I'm like, man, well, nah. They, and people had to explain to me, because I've never been on no movie set or no TV set. So, you know, and that's how that, that's how that kicked off. <laughs> wow. So he just he just met you, thought you were interesting, wanted to bring you around, and I, I'm I'm guessing, I'm guessing you would say that that moment kind of changed your life all forever. The females will, yeah, he saying all the females on me, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah, he came over there. It was the swag. So when he saw fly. that, he had to figure out what was going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> so would you say though, Snoop, looking back at that, how much did your life change after after becoming Snoop on the wire? 
and it became it wasn't my life no more. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> what, everything is just out there. Who the hell is this? That's what people want to know. Who's this? Why she sound like that? You know, uh, people had to put catchings on that TV to understand what um, what I was saying back then. You know, and Mike, that's why I love my brother so much because I didn't know, I didn't understand the industry or whatever. Like I said, I was coming from the streets. I didn't give a fuck about nothing. Excuse my language. I could cuss. Mm -hmm. You're good. But, uh, it happened already. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, he pulled me to the side. I was like, man, listen. You know, um, I'm gonna set you up with uh, a speech coach. You know what I mean? So you could go ahead and um, just, you know what I mean? So you could pronounce the eight words clear. And you hear, you hear how I'm talking now. You know, little things clear here. Man. Yo, <laughs> yo, when you when you first started, the way you speak now, and the way you, when we first met you on the wire, that you Baltimore accent was nothing. so thick. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Too real. Everything was yet to me. Yeah, the B, what's up? I still do my little yeah, the B, but you know I clean it up. I clean it up. That's and, dope, and man. With the uh, the way yeah. that you and Mike met, based on your story, it's really a testament of his character too, because he connects to energies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you said, he saw yes. you across and that's the what room. I, I can't understand. Yeah, and he, you know what I'm saying? He saw you and he connected and he felt something in you. You know what I'm saying? Which is similar yeah, to he how he's connected in this black like market. That. A lot of people. Yeah, he did a lot of people like that, man. Mm -hmm. He he turned people into uh, producers, all mm -hmm. types of things. Like if mm -hmm. you even, I didn't even say to Mike, "Oh, I got a dream." You know what I mean? I want to be an actor, right. or actress, or whatever. It wasn't nothing like that, and you know, like it was just I, it wasn't nothing but God, man. He had a anointing over top of him. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like mm -hmm. he was just a blessed mm -hmm. man. You know what yeah. I mean? But everybody had their demons. You know what I'm saying? Like. I mean, he just wore his on his sleeve. He wasn't afraid to talk about his demons. Right. You know what I mean, if you knew him, you knew what was up. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Yeah. One of the things, too, um, I've heard many stories, you know, as of recent, too, uh, that no matter where he was, no matter how much he may have been in a rush or whatever he had to do, if he saw a car on the street and somebody was stuck, he would force whoever he was in the car with to stop and pull over to help that person. Yeah. Four in the morning, five yeah. in the morning, three in the afternoon, it didn't matter. And yeah. so many people, when I heard those stories, was like, yeah, man, you don't even know. We like, man, we gotta go, we gonna be late. But that's the type of person he was. He yeah. always wanted to help, it didn't matter. If somebody was stuck, he'd be like, pull a car over. And we gonna figure it out and we gonna help them get on their way. And that's how he he spots certain things. And I'm assuming how this show is going, he he's just connecting to certain things that some people don't see that he sees and he believes needs exposure. Is that how the show is? Because I haven't, unfortunately, I haven't been able to see it myself. But yeah, the show uh, I'm looking is forward to seeing the it. The show is definitely uh, him going into into underground worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it's called Black Market, obviously. These are things that are, you know, uh, not in the mainstream. And, uh, right. and showing the operations of them and even talking to the people or giving him access to, uh, you know, to, to understanding who they are and why they're making the why they're doing the businesses that they're doing. Right, and that's what he prefers to be. He always liked to be on the ground. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With the people and connect to the energy that's not pretentious. You know, mm -hmm. dance, let his spirit be free. Like, that's just who he was all the time. So this is almost the perfect show, you know, to really kind of carry out his character.